Hello everyone and welcome to Steven Plays. My name is Steven George. I play video games. Today we're starting a new LP. Today's uh, Let's Play is going to be Magic Duels of the Planeswalkers. Now some of you might be saying, now isn't, isn't there a sequel to this game? Magic 2012 Duels of the Planeswalkers? Yes. Uh, I figured if we are going to play both, because we might, we might actually play both of the games, it would probably be best to start with the old one. So we're going to start with the old one, work our way to the new one. For those who are unaware, I am a huge Magic the Gathering fan. Uh, I've been playing the actual card game for um, several years, and uh, I would love to be able to not only show you a excellent LP and an excellent game, but also actually teach you how to play Magic the Gathering. My hope is that by the end of this LP, you will know yourself how to play Magic the Gathering. That's what I'm hoping for. So to start off, we're going to uh, click this first button here, Play Magic. We're going to skip the tutorial and go to Campaign. As you can see, there are 16 different opponents to fight. Um, we're going to fight a few of them uh, over again. They either have different decks or improved decks, etc. And we have a deck manager. These are all the decks that are available to us, and we've got two that we can use from the get-go. We have a red deck and a green deck. There are five colors in Magic. White, blue, black, red, and green. All of the colors have different strategies. Um, for example, the uh, color red uh, stands for fury. Um, they tend to be a little reckless. They just want to defeat the opponent as fast as they can. Um, they have a lot of spells that do direct damage to the player themselves. Uh, they're personally my favorite color. I love red. I think it's it's a blast. Green um, focuses not so much on um, magic that'll damage the player. They want creatures, and I'm going to explain all the card types uh, by the end of the episode. Um, so green wants to get big. They want to get big and burly and, and attack with a huge force. Um, Blue is controlling magic. Blue will let you manipulate the game to your advantage. White uh, tends to do things with a lot of little guys. You can come out with uh, a swarm of, of uh, smaller creatures. White's the color of righteousness, of life gain. Um, and then you have black, which is the opposite. Uh, black will kill its own guys in order to get ahead. So you have a lot of different strategies. You can combine the colors if you so desire. Now this game is a little limiting on how you can modify your deck. You're kind of you're kind of stuck with what they give you. You can put in a few cards here and there, but it's not the same experience as if you were going to make your own deck uh, using physical cards. Anyway, as I said before, my favorite color to use is red. Um, but I do want to show off all the decks if I can, so I'm actually going to use the green deck, Teeth of the Predator. Trample your opponent's creatures underfoot with this beast of a green deck. So I'm going to hit select deck, so we're going to use the green deck. And our first opponent is Chandra. Chandra is a pyromancer. She uses fire magic, which means she's going to be using a red deck. So let's jump to it. Alright, so since we skipped the tutorial, the game is going to be very straightforward in telling us, you know, here here you go, start the game, because you obviously know how to play. Now, you guys may not know how to play, so I'm going to explain to you the rules of magic. At the beginning of the game, you are going to draw seven cards from your deck of 60 or more cards. Your deck must have 60 cards in it. Card types consist of um, land, which is what we have here, and it's going to give us tips since this is our first time playing. So here is uh, one of our land cards. We also have creature cards. Uh, we also have uh, different spells called instants and enchantments. The other cards not listed here are um, sorceries, which are sort of like instants. And uh, we also have planeswalker cards, although to be quite honest, I don't think there's any planeswalker cards in Duels of the Planeswalker. So it's probably something we're not going to see uh, while playing. Uh, there's also equipment cards, which um, I don't think they're in this particular deck, but I'm sure they'll probably pop up. But when you start the game, you draw your hand of seven cards, and you can decide if you want to keep that hand or mulligan and go down to um, one less card. So you can continue to mulligan, but you're going to have less cards to start with. So if you can, you want to you want to keep all seven cards. So let's take a look at our hand, see what we have. We have three land. That's good. You're going to only plan play one land a turn. And that land card is going to allow you to do um, to cast your spells and actually do things. So you definitely want to have land. So three lands is a really nice number. Let's take a look at this creature card, and I'll explain a bit. At the top left, we have the name of the card, 
grizzly bears. In the middle, it says it's a creature, so we can identify what card type it is, and then it says what kind of creature it is. It's a bear. Um, the italics doesn't mean anything. Up in the top right, you'll see uh, two symbols. You'll see a uh, circle with a tree in it, and to the left of that, you'll see a circle with a one in it. What that means is you need to pay one tree, one forest, and one of any color to cast the grizzly bears. So if you want to play this card, you need two land. You need one, which is a forest, and one of any color. Since we have two forests, we would be able to play this card. The downside is you can only play one land per turn, so the earliest we could get grizzly bears out would be turn two. Now, uh, point your attention to the bottom right portion of the card, and you're going to see two numbers. The number on the left is the grizzly bear's uh, power, his offense, how much damage he can do to other creatures or players. He can do two. The number on the right is how much damage he can take, his hit points or whatever you want to call it. He can take two. Um, at the end of every turn, those hit points are reset. So if your creature manages to live through an attack, on the next player's turn, your creature will regain all their life and they'll be back to two or whatnot. Here we have another creature. You can see that this one costs three, two force and one of any color, but it's a three three, so it costs more, but it's a better creature. Here we have an enchantment. Enchantments um, alter things on the field. If it's, a, if it's an enchantment, it'll go on the field permanently. If it's an enchantment aura, it enchants something. In this case, it says on the card that it enchants the creature. And then it says the enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, meaning plus one power and plus one HP for each force you control. So for example, you have to have at least three uh, land or mana to cast this card since it costs one forest and two of any color. So it costs three. So if when you cast this card, let's say that we already have our grizzly bears on the field. It's a 2-2, two, two, right? We cast this on turn two. The next turn we have another force, so we have three force. We're able to cast this armor. We enchant the grizzly bears. The grizzly bears, because we have three land on the field, would then become a 5-5. Five, five, and that is permanent until the creature dies. When the creature dies, uh, for whatever reason, the, um, the creature itself would be discarded and the enchantment. Uh, the instant is, well, I'll explain sorceries first. Sorceries, and I didn't get one, but you'll see, you'll see them soon enough. Sorceries must be played on your turn. Sorceries alter the game in some way. They do some card effect. Instants are cool because they are sorceries that can be played at any time, even on your opponent's turn. So at any point, I can pay one mana, and a creature of mine would get plus three, plus three until end of turn, which means it wouldn't be permanent, but for that moment in time, that turn, he would become huge. Now, I've explained a lot, but um, I'm confident that you guys are going to get it soon enough. And if you already know how to play Magic, this is just uh, running over stuff you already know. Anyway, this is a good hand. Um, we don't have any turn one plays, but I'm excited and I'm going to keep it. It looks like Chandra gets to go first, so she's playing a land card, as you do once a turn. And now it's our turn. We draw a card every turn, so let's take a look at what we got. Wow, so son of a gun, we actually have a turn one now. Um, you also notice that Chandra didn't draw a card. If you go first, you do not get to draw on your first turn. Every other time in the game, both players will draw a card, but not the, uh, the first, first turn. So now we have a 0-3. Uh, it's a defender. If it's a defender, it means the creature cannot attack. I'll explain shortly. So on our turn, we get to play one land, so let's play a forest. And the only play that we re really have is this defender, so let's play it. It's going to go ahead and tell us creatures with defenders can't attack. So we're in a main phase right now. And uh, here's the other thing I should mention. Every creature that you bring out onto the field has summoning sickness. It means you cannot attack or tap it, and we'll get into that soon, um, to, to you, you basically can't use the creature um, the turn that you cast it. And as far as tapping goes, you have to tap something to use it. So, for example, you saw that we put that forest on the field, on the battlefield, and in order to play the Wall of Vines, we tapped it. So, we tapped the land, 
and we were able to play the creature. Once the land is tapped, the land does not become untapped to become usable again until your next turn. So at the beginning of this turn, you notice that the forest untapped. Now let's play another forest. Now we have our grizzly bears that we can play, or we can play a giant growth. Uh, giant growth is not going to do us any good because if we cast 3-3 three, three on our um, defender, it's going to turn him into a 3-6, but he can't even attack, so it's pointless. Let's instead cast our grizzly bears. So we tap our two land to show that we're playing the card. And the reason it hovers in midair is because Chandra actually gets a, a, a chance right then to play a response. In that case, the only card she'd be allowed to play would be an instant, but she can play an instant. Okay, looks like she's playing something something crazy. Uh, Goblin King, she's casting it for three. It's a 2-2. Two, two. Other goblin creatures have plus one, plus one, and have mountain walk. Mountain walk, or whatever walk, means that if you have that particular type of land on your side of the battlefield, those creatures are unblockable. So for example, if I had chosen to play with the red deck, I would be using mountains instead of forests. If she has this creature out that gives her creatures, uh, or other goblin creatures rather, mountain walk, she can attack, and even if I have stuff to defend and block myself with, it doesn't do me any good because she's going to hit me anyway. Kind of sucks. For me, it's good because I don't have any mountains, so it's really a useless effect in this particular scenario. Alright, so I've got another giant growth. Could definitely come in handy. These things can uh, really, really throw the game for a loop. I'm going to put in another forest. And we can play this trained Armadon. He's a 3 3. Or we can enchant our bear with uh, Blankwood armor. So that's also an idea. I think for this particular scenario, it would probably be best to get the trained Armadon out. Now, take a look at the top of the screen. You're going to see Begin, Main, Attack, Block, Damage, and Main. We've already went to through Begin. Begin is basically where you draw a card. If there's any card effects that need to happen in the begin phase, in the beginning phase, then they will. Then you move on to the main phase. Um, at this point, you can do everything except attack. When you're done with your main phase, you go to the attack phase where you are going to uh, choose who you want to attack. Um, then from there, you, the uh, other player will choose their blockers. Damage will be done, and then you get an, another chance to do a main phase. So for example, I can cast this card now, or I can um, wait until after I've attacked and cast it as long as I still have the mana to do so. And the only thing is, if I attack with my bear, who is a 2-2, two -two, I can select the bear. It won't, let, it won't let me select the bear for whatever reason, but the bear is a 2-2. Two -two. He's got a 2-2 uh, two -two also. So if I attack with his 2-2, two -two, he could block with his 2-2, two -two, and we would kill each other. I would do two to his two, he would do two to my two, done and done. Now that might seem like a pretty good deal, but maybe I don't want to lose my bear. So how about this? Instead of casting this creature, let's cast Blankwood Armor. And we're going to enchant our bear with it. Now our bear is permanently a 5-5. The, the, basically, the good thing about this is that now I can swing, and I'm not worried about anything. He's got a 2-2. He can block me if he wants, but I'm, I'm going to kill his creature. Um, now to actually talk about the actual game of Magic. Each player has 20 health. You can see the, um, the 20 under her name, Chandra Nalar, and under mine at the bottom right, Steven plays. The goal of Magic is to decrease your opponent's health points to zero, however possible. Um, now I've got this creature that can attack. He's got a creature that can block. Um, if he didn't have a creature that could block, I'm going to be swinging straight at Chandra. So whenever we choose the bear to attack, you'll see that we are attacking Chandra. Now, as the opponent, Chandra gets to choose whether or not she's going to block my bear or not. If she chooses to block, I'll be doing 5 damage to her 2, and she'll be doing 2 damage to my 5. I don't know what she's going to do, so I guess we have to see. She has a chance to cast an instant. She now has to choose blockers. She chooses not to block. And I do 5 damage to her 20, knocking her down to 15. So the game's letting me know there I need to do 15 more damage to win. Now it's her turn. 
See, she did what I just talked about a second ago. She didn't she didn't cast this card at the beginning, and then she chose not to attack and casted it during her last main phase. Now this is a unique card because it is flying. If a creature is flying, it can only be blocked by other creatures with flying or creatures that have an ability called reach. Luckily it's only a 1-2, so even though I don't have a flying creature to block it, it's not going to do a whole lot of damage. So now, it has a, uh, okay, well here's the downside to this, let's see, I need to switch positions on the table, how do I do that, there we go, okay, so now I'm looking at her side of the table, so I can see what she sees. I was hoping it would let me actually select the card. I can I can select my own cards, which does me no good. Which is really strange. Okay, the old magic doesn't let you do it. Anyway, the reason the, her new goblin flyer has 2-3 is because it's a goblin. If you remember, the other card had an ability that says all the goblins get plus 2, plus 2, or plus 1, plus 1, and have mountain box. So she is a 2-3 flyer. It's not too big of a problem, but in 10 turns, if I didn't get a flyer or a reach creature out, she would kill me. Let's put this forest out and see what we can do. Well, looky here! A giant spider! Now, the spider has reach, and as I just said, the reach will be able to block flyers. So the spider is not flying itself, but it can block flyers. So, since it just got a flying creature out, probably a good idea to play this card. Okay. It went through, and now I have a spider. So now I have a way to block her creature. Excellent. And uh, since there's really nothing that's going to block my absolutely huge bear, who remember, because um, I put in another forest, actually grew, because it, it the enchantment that was plus one, plus one for each forest you control is not... You don't look at all of the forest and say, well, it's three, so it's going to be three forever. No. Since I continue to add forests, the grizzly bears are going to keep getting bigger. So now I have a 6-6. Six, six. If I get another forest next turn, it's going to be a 7-7 seven, seven and so on. This is a pretty big freaking bear. We're going to swing for 6. We'll see what they do. Probably not too anxious to take 6 damage. She's going to let it slide. Wow. Chandra's down to 9. She better come up with a plan quick. Wow, she's not even going to declare a block or uh, an attacker because there's no point. She knows that now that I have my spider, that if she attacked with a two three, I'm going to do two to her three, and she's going to be two two to my four. We're both going to live, but the thing is, when you attack, you tap your creature. This is another thing I haven't explained yet. When you attack, you tap your creature to attack, and if your creature is tapped, that creature can't block. Which means, because I have my bear tapped, if I had no other creatures but that bear, and the bear was tapped, they could attack me and I can't block with the bear. So she doesn't want to risk that, because she needs a blocker in case I do something crazy. Now she's asking for permission to play Goblin Piker, it's a 2-1. Uh, I don't have any response anyway, because I don't have um, any untapped mana, so I allow it. And it becomes a 3-2 because of the Goblin King's ability. Let's see what we just drew. Troll Ascetic. Uh, a 3-2 three, for 3. Troll Ascetic cannot be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. That's actually pretty cool. And it has an ability. An ability is written on the card, and it has a colon. So whenever this card is um, on the battlefield, and um, you have mana available, in this case one forced and one of any color, you can regenerate Troll Ascetic. And what regenerate means, and I know I'm probably overwhelming you with terms, but there's not really an easier way to go about it because, to be quite honest, magic is difficult and there's a lot of rules. Um, if, you're, if you have a creature that can regenerate, that means that if you pay that cost while in battle, before the creature dies, if it were to die, it will come back to life. So, for example, uh, I have a 3-2. Let's say the opponent has a 5-5, and it attacks with the 5-5. Five, five. 
I choose to block with this 3-2. Now, the 5-5 five five is going to wipe me out, and I can't even do any damage back to the 3-2. It's just, it's not going to kill it. However, if I pay that cost before I die, my troll ascetic will block the creature so the creature doesn't do any damage to my life points, and my creature will live. It's pretty sweet. It's an incentive to make sure that you keep two mana um, untapped. Now, we've got four available, so we can we can play this. We'd still have uh, a uh, chance to use giant growth. We could do the same thing here. So do we want a 3-3, three, three, or do we want a 3-2 that can regenerate? The downside is that we wouldn't be able to regenerate right now. Let's take a look at the field. We've got a 6-6, six, six, a 0-3, and a 2-4. We're pretty set. Not to mention, Chandra's got 9 life and we've got 20. We're obviously in the in the best position here. I think it might be in our best interest to um, attack first, see what she's going to let us do, and then from there we'll decide. Because if she allows us to swing with our 6-6 six, six, and she doesn't block it, we can pump that thing up with a giant growth and it'll, the game will be over. It'll become a 9-9 nine, nine and win. So we're going to hit continue and go into the attack phase. I'm going to be swinging with the 6-6. Six, six. I'm not going to swing with the 2-4 uh, the uh, just because I want something to block the flyer if the flyer attacks. And also, in the event that they don't block the 2-4, even with two giant growths, I'm only going to be doing eight damage, so I'm just going to wait it out. I'm just going to attack with the bear. Let's see what happens. All right, so I'm going to stop time just to show this. You can stop time anytime you want so you can play additional cards. She's choosing to block with the three, two. Pop quiz, what's going to happen? Since my number on the left is six and her number on the right is two, I do six to her two, enough to kill her. Her number on the left will do her number on the left to my number on the right, her three to my six. Not enough to kill me, by a long shot. So there's no reason to play a giant growth. I'm already bigger than her. She's choosing to block, but she's gonna lose that creature. Eh, whatever, her decision. So we'll continue. We trade. I shouldn't use the word trade. Trade is when two creatures kill each other. There's magic terms. All right, so now we're back to my main phase. This was my plan see what happens, and then go from there. Because I might have needed to use these, and if I played these cards, I wouldn't be able to use them. So now I, I see that I didn't need my Giant Gross, and I have the opportunity to play one of these. Since I'm kind of taking kindly to Troll Aesthetic, I think I'm going to play him. Troll Aesthetic comes out, she allows it, and we go to her turn. All right. She is choosing to attack with her 2-3 flyer. So it's going to do 2 damage to my 20. I can allow this if I want. I mean, heck, I've got 20 health. Who cares? But I have a blocker, a 2-4. And if I block, we won't, do, we won't be able to kill each other and everything should be fine. So I'm going to block. She'll do 2 to my 4. I'll do 2 to her 3. Oh, but what is this? It looks like she has a response. She is going to use Shock, which does instant damage, two damage, to um, my uh, spider. Now, if she does two damage to my spider before they even do their combat damage to each other, my spider is going to be a 2-2. Now you see what's going to happen here. I'm going to do two to her three, not enough to kill her, but she's going to do two to my two, which will kill me. I'm not a big fan of this. This is not something I'm, I'm fond of, but I'll allow it. I'm going to go ahead and let that through. However, in response to that, I'm going to use Giant Growth, and I'm going to pump up my Spider. Now, here is where magic gets really interesting. What you're experiencing right now is called the stack. The stack is what makes magic um, really, quite frankly, awesome. The, the cards all have effects. And when you play a card, specifically instants or abilities like this, they start stacking up as long as you're waiting on something to go through. So, for example, we're just trying to get um, the damage to go through. I, I declared, uh, she declared an attacker, I declared an, a blocker. In response to declaring a blocker, she is casting shock. In response to her shock, I'm casting giant growth. The thing is, the cards 
go through the stack from top to bottom. Which means since I was the last one to cast Giant Growth, my card gets to go through first. Now let's see what happens. Giant Growth goes through first. I become a 5-7. Then her shock hits. Uh-oh, I'm a 5-5, son. Prepare to die. Now things are not going her way at all because originally we were just not going to do any damage. Like, we weren't going to kill each other. Now she's actually lost her creature. I don't think she's too happy about that. So now she's she's not doing so well. In one turn, she managed to lose um, two creatures, and now I'm doing I'm I'm in. Let's be honest, I'm in good shape. So here's a sorcery. It costs five. Target player gains eight life. So if we had five, we don't have five. If we had five, we could do this and go up to twenty-eight. There is no limit on the life you can have. You could have a thousand life, and, and there's been games where you actually can get to a thousand life. It's crazy, but it's possible. Well, because we can't play this, um, we could play this, and this in addition, but we may need the um, mana to cast Regenerate. Possibly. I mean, not probable, but possibly. So we're going to go to the attack phase and see what we can muster up. So we have three creatures that can attack here. It's pretty obvious which one she's going to block. The biggest one. So if I swing, um, and it's going to do fatal damage, She's going to block. She's, she's going to block the bear. So let's just assume for a second that all we are really going to hit with are these two. How much damage is that? Five. Even with giant growth, we're only going to be able to do eight total damage. It's just simply not enough. But I think we might as well save giant growth because we might need it for an instance like we did a minute ago. So let's swing with everything. The interesting factor here is because I because she could kill this troll, she might. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I have no. I have. I have no idea. So let's continue. See what she does. She's gonna block somewhere because she's gonna lose if she doesn't. Okay. As I suspected, she chose to block the big guy. We're gonna do five damage to her. We could do eight, but we'll wait. We'll let it go through and see what happens. Six to your two, two to my six. Yeah, you're gone, Goblin King. Have a good one. The giant spider's gonna do two damage to Chandra, and the troll said it's gonna do three. Nice. Now we're back to our main phase. I still have the option to play a card, so I think I'll go ahead and play this 3-3 elephant. Hello there, Mr. Elephant, how are you? All right, back to Chandra's turn. Let's see what she does. She's got four mana available, finally. It's taken her a while. She's got a card. She's got a Lightning Elemental, which is a 4-1 Haste. Interesting. I guess what's most interesting is that she didn't play that before. Um, a creature with Haste means that it doesn't have Summoning Sickness, basically. Um, it can tap and attack um, the turn you bring it out. So she could have attacked with 4 damage straight up, right there. Uh, but I guess she didn't want to. Too bad for her, because her mana's all tapped out. She doesn't really have any op options here. And um, I'm about to give it to her good. Now, sorceries can only be cast during your main phase. Now, these instants can be cast during your attack phase. Um, the only thing that can be, attack that, that can be done during your um, attack phase is instants and abilities, because abilities, such as regenerate, count as instants. Well... Um, there's really no way she's going to get around this. I mean, look at this. She's got four. If she blocks the biggest guy, which is a 7-7, seven, seven, she's still going to take eight. That's not good. Let's add insult to entry and give ourselves 28 life. Nice. That was completely unneeded, but fun. And uh, let's see what you, <laughs> what you choose to do. I'm going to assume you're going to block the 7-7. Seven, seven. Of course. Well, unfortunately, you're still going to take eight. Bam. Bam. And bam. Negative four to 28. Very nice. Very nice indeed. So that was our first magic battle. Now, as you can already tell, these episodes will probably be a little longer because magic takes a little while to do. Um, but I, 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 that's just kind of the way it is. You have to deal with it. All right, so for winning, we get a new card to add to the deck. Now, you'll notice that we already had this, but in your magic deck, you can have up to four of the same card. 
So I don't know how many of these we had in there before, but now we can add a new card. Excellent. So we took care of Chandra Nalar. Next episode, we will be facing off against Elspeth Terrell. And if we win her, we will unlock a deck, presumably the deck she uses, which is a white deck. Anyway, um, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this, uh, this first episode of this Magic Duels of the Planeswalker LP. And uh, be sure to join us next time when we will face off against Elspeth and quite honestly kick her butt. Because that's what we do. Uh, thanks for watching and see you guys next time.